So I was sent this uh, older code book from the town of Framingham from uh, somebody that knew I collected old code books. Thank you, somebody. And as I was looking through this, I was trying to find a date for how old it was, and I couldn't find one. It actually doesn't have a date, but it references some 1950s um, standards in the front. But what I noticed was in the back, I found this section on swimming pools. And if you can see here, it's on swimming pool barriers. And uh, on the barriers that are required to keep sneaky kids and smart young kids from finding their way into the pool that they're not supposed to be in and um, drowning themselves. So I thought, wow, that goes back to the 1950s. Like I say, this book doesn't have a date, but it does reference nothing but 1950s standards. And I thought, that's pretty interesting because I was pretty aware of swimming pool barrier codes and aware that the 2015 International Swimming Pool and Spa Code has a whole section on barrier requirements. And what was significant in that year, 2015, is that because of the barrier requirements in the International Swimming Pool and Spa Code, the 2015 International Residential Code was pulled. It used to have Appendix G was for swimming pools and we had all the barrier requirements that building inspector would need right here in the 2015 IRC. So I think that was kind of a bad choice personally because it's not here in this nice accessible book. The barrier is a key thing that needs to be looked at. Um, so I thought, well, where does that go? If it went back to the 1950s in um, Farmingham, Framingham, then where, where back does it go from there? So you can go back to the 2012 IRC and that's where we have the last time we have Appendix G for swimming pool and spa codes, that is your 2012 IRC right there. It goes back further to the 2000 IRC. Um, it has it as well, but it was the Cabo 1 and 2 Family Dwelling Code. This is the, the last of this edition, just prior to the IRC. And you can see here we have Appendix D, swimming pool and spa code. But you can also notice all the barrier requirements all nice bars going down there. Uh, this was the first time that barriers were addressed in the Cabo 1 and 2 Family Code, 1995. So Eureka, we found the first time at least that swimming pools were developed there. So then I went to my UBC collection, which I have a pretty complete collection of, and it was 1991 is the first time I was able to find anything on swimming pools, and that is over here. In this section, barriers for swimming pools. Uh, and you can see right there, it says, nope, this is a new division. So first time for UBC was 1991. So that kind of correlates, maybe that's what brought it over here to the Cabo Code. Uh, then I went to my Boca collection and uh, my oldest Boca is a 1978. And sure enough, in my oldest Boca, I do find a section on swimming pool safety devices. And right here we talk about gates and uh, trying to inhibit a child and whatnot from drowning. So as far as I know, I don't know how much further back it goes in Boca, but at least we know by 1978, Boca had addressed these uh, security barriers. Southern Building Code, my 1969 edition. Can't find anything on swimming pools. All the way up to my... 1982 Southern Standard. Again, I can't find anything on swimming pools. Maybe there is something there someone can contribute. Maybe uh, someone watching can tell me how old it goes back in Boca. I checked my insurance codes. The uh, National Building Code from the American Insurance Association and National Bureau uh, Board of Fire Underwriters. No swimming pool stuff in there. All right, that's the rundown. Longer than I wanted it to be, but there it is. That's what I've got for you at least on the history of swimming pool barrier codes. Uh, I guess I have to give it to the winner in my collection, the town of Framingham. And if you look at that, you can also see that this is an amendment to the building code. I'm not sure exactly what they're referencing there, but it tells me they were thinking about it, something they were giving extra special thought to children and swimming pools in the 1950s. Good job, thanks.